Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. Today's show is about cold fronts and how they affect bass. We'll discuss how they affect the fish physically and the strategies to overcome these conditions. It's going to be a great show, so stay with us. This week, the new fly fisher crew is in the Elliott Lake area in Ontario. Once a booming town of 20,000 people, Elliott Lake saw its four mining operations close down in the 1980s. Instead of accepting defeat, the city began to sell itself as an ideal retirement community. This proved successful as the city now is stabilized at approximately 12,000 people. With over 4,000 lakes in the area holding plentiful stocks of lake trout, rainbow trout, speckled trout, pike, bass, and walleye, Elliott Lake is definitely a fisherman's paradise. The reports from the previous week had been good and the fishing was excellent, but this week is different. The remnants of Hurricane Ike had gone through the area and I knew the fishing would be challenging. Cold fronts will challenge your angling skills. This is mainly because fronts send most fish into a negative feeding mood. What is a cold front? A cold front can be described as the edge of a colder air mass that moves in on a warmer air mass. The intensity of the front will vary. Rain, high winds, and overcast skies occur during the initial stages of most cold fronts. After the edge of the cold front passes, typically weather conditions are bright, blue skies, few clouds, low humidity, and a drop in air temperature. These post front conditions might be pleasant to the angler, but they make for tough fishing. Now what we're doing is just letting the wind push the boat along. I got my leech on the bottom, I'm twitching it as we move along. The fish are, are stuck dead on the bottom today. We've had some uh, fronts go through in the last few days. It's put them way down, they're not up near the top. Just letting the boat drift you. And then you just drip, pull it along the bottom. It's just like the action of a jig up and down. And with the long tail that I have on my, on my leech, it gives it that nice action. Fish on. Already? Yep. <laughs> ah, good stuff. Fish on. I am very happy. Okay. Good stuff. Wayne said there's a shoal here. We're dropped shallow to deep. We got some cabbage weed and obviously some structure. I put my leech down and we're letting the wind take us. And he's gonna come up in a second here. There he goes, yeah. About the same size as the last one. All right. Beautiful. When they told me how good the fishing was up here, you know, everybody brags on their own area, but they weren't kidding this time. <laughs> the fishing is absolutely spectacular here. And let's see if I can get this guy up and show the camera. There's your net there, buddy. Yep. Yeah, I think I will use a net. There we go. Not as big as the last one, but the right species. Away he goes. Small one, but right species. Gotta love it. Fishing is absolutely fantastic here. And as you've seen, the fight is quite, quite good from a smallmouth. If you like jumpers, smallmouth are what you want to come for. Oh, that's wonderful. Stick with the leech. They seem to like it today. How do cold fronts affect fish? Air pressure affects fish because their buoyancy in the water is controlled by an air sac. This is very sensitive and they feel the slightest changes in air pressure. 
It's generally believed that a falling pressure tends to make a fish more active and that a rising pressure shuts them down. Therefore, when a front is approaching us, the pressure is dropping until it arrives and then begins to rise. Thus, fish tend to bite best before an approaching front and generally not as well after it passes. Bass and other fish react to bright sky and high pressure by going deep and getting real tight to cover. They also become inactive. Responding to those changes will improve your odds. Three tactics you should use is go deeper, go slower, and fish the cover. I was pulling up some bass the other day. Leeches? Yeah, well, uh, Leech you know, we, we were, no, no, we were doing the, you know, that bait fishing thing. We switched over to, I didn't have my fly rod. Well, it was blowing like a hurricane. And I switched over and I started jigging off the bottom. Mm -hmm. and, and that started pr to produce fish for sure. And the so boys, by dri jigging off the bottom, I've just copied what you're doing with the leech pattern. Just, yeah, exactly. Just giving a little twitch every once in a while, twitch. Yeah. Just like but, that with the end of the rod. And that's what the boys were doing with their, with their bait. They were getting it down off the bottom and, you know. So even though fly fishermen don't fish with bait, we try to copy what is successful, exactly. which is a jigging motion. I have a little piece of split shot that is attached just to the, the front of my, my leech pattern because it's just made out of rabbit fur. So I want it to go down and then back up, down and back up. Well, there we go, fish on, fish on. Okay, a little, maybe a little more aggressive approach. Wow. Now I was just getting ready to try something different and I just quickened up my, my retrieve and the fish took it. And it looks like a, not a real big one, but well, it's certainly a, maybe I should get on the reel. Whoa, yeah, just a little guy. <laughs> Where is he? He's right down below us now. See, right there. <laughs> He'll come up again. It's just a little guy. When? There you go. Are you? Not very big. Hold on one sec, I'm just gonna get it out of them. Okay. Not very large, just a little guy. But it saves the day. Again, I, I, I was trying, gonna tie in another fly and I just quickened up my pace on my retrieve and he struck. So maybe that's what I need to do is just quicken up my pace a bit. Good. Now it's time to change flies. I was using a kind of a bunny leech here and, and they seem to have gone off it. So it's time to change flies. I'm gonna use something in a black color and this has got some ice chenille it's called in there, which is just a little sparkle. But what I wanna show you is it's, it's called a loop knot and we've been using it with leech patterns and any kind of bugger pattern. And what it does, it allows more action of the, of the fly. So here's how you do it. First off, make an overhand loop in the line first. This is before you put on the fly. Then you take your fly and string it through. And slide it down to where the loop is. Then you just gotta hold on to the, the, your line and the loop. Take your tag end, run it through that loop, and behind where the loop is, go around it as you would a clinch knot three or four times. One, two, three, I'll do three. Then back through the loop. Grab onto it, moisten with a little saliva from your mouth, then grab it with your teeth and pull tight, pulling down with the fly on with the tag itself. There. Now we take the tag end off and I'll show you what we got.
And that is what we got here is a loop nut. And what you will see, watch what the wind does to it. See the wind, it's moving the, 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 the bugger itself. I'm not moving the line. The bugger is moving in the wind. That shows you how much action you will get underneath the water. It's a great knot. The, the Stillwater trout fishermen out west use it a lot. Uh, back in my lure days, we used that kind of a knot for uh, pulling plugs, repellas and such, and it just gives a little extra action. Now crayfish are another major source of food for smallmouth. Watch as Ken Collins from Grand River Trout Fitters shows us a really interesting technique on in how to use an indicator with a crayfish. With that 11 degree night and that primus territory shot, but I know that there's fish there, I can't help myself, but I gotta do some investigating. Not me fishing, but with a deeper, slower presentation. If these fish are lethargic and down, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop a vertical crayfish presentation through them. And what we're gonna do is you just line up where you wanna go with this indicator there, Bill. So you toss one out there. And then you mend if you need to, if it's not that currenty. And then you're just gonna tap that indicator at a good crayfish pace looking for indications of bottom as you tap it and tap it and tap it and tap it and tap it. And what's going to happen on a strike is that indicator just isn't going to come back up. That indicator is going to stay down okay. and just set it up. So I'm going to switch your rods. I'll take care of this. This is a new technique for me. Yeah, this is vertical, vertical streamer fishing, I call it. <laughs> Roll cast starts are better because they're quite weighted systems and just let it plug. Again, that's a custom made line for roll casting perfection. Not bad, a little, what I call a little hoppy type of presentation, it'll work, but. What do you want me to do, just strip um, it? Or? You, know, you know what, that's not terrible. I don't mind that. I, I, you're not as bad as some of my clients that really get hoppy and there's so much slack line that I, I can't see the strike. I call that the roller coaster that presentation you're doing. See how you throw a roller coaster okay. hill? So There's better, what I like, a tap, because there tap. I can see a strike. Okay. All right, understood what you want now. Right there, mend down. Down. And feed for me. That was a fish. It might be. No, he's going to roll. Oh, there, there. there That's he is. fish. <laughs> 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 that was... <laughs> oh, brother. Oh. <laughs> I'll take that. Oh, I'll take that. Yeah, that, that now you it. know why I call it Dexter's Hole. Dexter's Hole. Oh, my goodness. And this ain't a bad fish. No. It's right, not a bad it? fish. There's three falling below on him. I can see him. Yeah, they're right behind him. <laughs> Come to try to steal his food. Yeah, when he spews. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Ken knows his stuff. He knows his stuff. Now, we didn't tell you that these fish are on, on payroll and they're paid to, to bite. <laughs> yeah, on trout fitter salary. They're Here not making go. much. Oh, man, oh, man. This is... Wow, I just can't get over the, the fishing that we've had in this last day. Uh, Ken, you're showing me some great techniques. Uh, that are <laughs> majorly effective, especially this this whole indicator uh, nymphings type of, of technique, which I wouldn't have thought was good for smallmouth, but it certainly proved me that uh, that the, that it is good. Wow! And again, quality fish. It's not a 20 incher, but I'll it's, catch these all day. Look at what's doing to my rod. I don't need that. No. He's a 16. We don't need no net. We don't need no stinking net. Easy, boy. Easy. 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 Come on. Stay in the water. Just give, 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 give me your mouth and it's over. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Nice hook set. Yep. Got him right in the corner of the mouth. Another quality, quality, soggy. Edit. <laughs> I want a time on that one. <laughs> but there we go. Lovely fish. Lovely. 
Slow presentation is the key to success when facing gold fronts. Strip leeches of various colors, woolly buggers, and crayfish will be your best bet during these tough times. Here's a tying recipe for the pattern I was using today, the bunny leech. The hook is a Mustad R74-9672 in sizes 2 through 8. The thread is 6 aught gray. The tail, natural brown and gray rabbit zonker strip. The body, natural brown gray cross cut rabbit strip. Lateral lines are two strands of pearlescent super flash or flashaboo. This pattern can be tied in various sizes and colors. Now Wayne, tell me about what's happening up here in Elliott Lake. It's expanding rapidly, but what's the reasoning for it? Well, we have a, a huge natural resource called uh, lakes. Uh, we've got 1,200 lakes spread over nine townships, roughly 40 square miles. Uh, within the, uh, a 90 minute radius, we've got 6,500 lakes and they contain every conceivable species of, of Canadian game fish from perch to muscalunge pike. Uh, we're renowned all over the place for our lake trout fishing and our square tail fishing. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's an amazing fishery, a tremendous wild area. And, and Elliott Lake is, is really the only urban hub in all of this wilderness that surrounds it. So it's a, a very peculiar setting, a very, a very odd gift of nature that we've got that uh, allows people to be very attracted to this region. region. We've literally uh, got everything under the sun. We've got a, a, a tent trailer park right in the middle of town called Westview Park. Um, we've got uh, a commercial operation called South Bay Park, run by the Wisniewski family, tremendous people. Um, we've got uh, a, a very upscale wilderness lodge called Laurentian Lodge, and for those that haven't been, uh, Flack Lake is a piece of heaven. Uh, the people up there are marvelous. They've done tremendous reservation, huge log building, incredibly attractive, lots of weddings, lots of high profile people have been through, various ministers of parliament and so on and so forth. Tremendous, tremendous accommodation. Within the city itself, we've got the Algo Mall, the Fireside. We're building a brand new Hampton Inn that will be ready uh, for occupancy, I believe, sometime next summer. So that's extremely uh, exciting for us and, and will add very much to our, our bed base and our capacity to, to attract people and to house them in, in very nice uh, accommodation. The first setup we're using today is a floating line to a sinking leader of various lengths. The depth of the water will dictate the length of the leader. We attached a three foot section of monofilament to the sinking leader and to that was our fly. The setup we are using for our indicator fishing is a floating line to a nine foot leader. Attached to the leader is an indicator placed approximately two times the depth of the water from the fly. Attached to the leader is our weighted crayfish. Too quick for him. <laughs> Oh, no. He smucked it right on the surface. He was not he letting it. He didn't even get a chance to give it, give it any kind no of string. twitch. I didn't even twitch it once. He was on it like a dirty shirt. I've never caught a dink in these next two bays. Oh, yeah. Okay. Again, getting it down. Ken said I wasn't getting down by casting farther down. So he had me cast more to the left of the boat and allowed the, fish to sink, uh, the, the fly to sink. And I'm... This guy doesn't want to come up. I haven't got a look at him yet. He's really yeah, shaking hard. You 20-inch here. Oh, it's a good fish. 17. 17? Yeah. Drag on the Islander, screaming. Yeah. Look at him going across the pool. He thinks he's salmon. Oh! <laughs> oh. Rod. Well, I have to on this. This isn't just a little smallmouth now. This this guy really knows how to fight. He's big enough and he's got shoulders enough to break me off if I don't watch it. Oh, good jump. You need to shorten? It's going to be a little too long. There, now lift. Right up in here we can get it on the screen on the netting. Oh, come on fish, don't make it so you can't see the netting. National fun. There are you. Good man. Now, 
Deeper water, deep water. That's what we wanted. What, what Ken's doing now is, is now we're, we're going where he knows that the fish are gonna be in these deeper holes. What you're looking for is olive colored water. Yep. And this is where you're finding them. And that is a good fish by anybody's standards. I would think so. Yes, sir. Oh, man. And fight, whoo. Did you have a little tussle there? A little tussle, a little yeah. Tussle Just a little that. tussle. A little tussle, and I think I'm gonna try that again. <laughs> oh, great. Fish on. Perfect. All right. Just had to change tactics a bit. Yeah, and he's, he he's fighting he's good. Yeah. Jump. Fighting good. He's going to jump soon. Come on. I've tried a few different. Hey, oh, good. There friend. you That's are. Good fish nice too. fish. Yeah. Well, I better get him on the reel. Nice fish. Good fish. I tied on a olive colored long leech. Because Wayne was telling me they got leeches in here. And leeches are a prime food for smallmouth. I was thinking different different baits that they have down here. I was thinking of crayfish, I was thinking of everything like that, but this leech seemed to pay off. I, I tried a chartreuse minnow pattern, wasn't any good, but this one paid off and this is a good fish. Very nice fish. The nice thing about this, this is 20 minutes from Elliott Lake itself. Elliott Lake has some tremendous fishing around it. They got lakes, they got rivers, they got everything you want. Oh, nice. now yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and I, Wayne's going to tell me in a minute, oh, that's our average size, aren't you? <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, for around here, honestly, it's a nice fish, but yeah. certainly not a, you know, an Elliott Lake yeah. monster, but it's a beauty. Get her in a net. Come here, you little devil. There All right, are. now this is fishing Elliott Lake. There you I go. I got her there. Fine, Elliott Lake smallmouth bass. That's a good bass in anybody's books. Beautiful. <laughs> makes, me, makes me proud. This is good. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Now, I'm just going to hold him here. Oh, he's ready to go. And away he goes. You hold him until you feel them kick. Once they, once they kick, then they're ready to go. Don't move them back and forth. Uh, the, the water's meant to go through the mouth, and then the gills, not the gills in the mouth. There is no argument that post-cold fronts can be tough. Understanding where the fish go and how they are affected will make you more successful. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, tight lines, and we'll see you next time.